This is the plaintiff, Lisa Lynn Bertraw. She says the defendants gave away her very expensive pottery equipment without her authorization, and they owe her big time for it. Her kiln, potters, wheel, tools, you name it, they gave it away. There's no way she's just going to sit idly by, so she's suing them for the $3,978.40 worth of stuff she now needs to go out and buy. These are the defendants, Nicole and Christopher Dominicki. Christopher says he was asked to store the plaintiff's belongings because she was getting rid of a storage locker and had nowhere to put her stuff. Three years later, and after numerous requests for her to retrieve her belongings and no response, the equipment was donated to a local school. They never received any compensation for storing the stuff, and she refused to come and get it. So what was he supposed to do? They're accused of firing up a lawsuit. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says the defendant gave away her expensive pottery equipment without her authorization. But the defendant says the plaintiff gave her orders to 86 it. It's the case of, you're killing me. You're welcome. Lisa Lynn Bertra? Yes. Okay, you're suing Nicole and Christopher Domenici? Dominici. Dominici? Okay. For $3,978.40 in pottery equipment. A kiln, pottery wheels, toolkits, et cetera, et cetera, that you had in their possession and that they, according to you, inappropriately disposed of. Tell that, me what's going on. Well, actually, in um, 2008, when I was pregnant, um, the father of my son, we were moving out of a storage unit, and he went ahead and took those, that equipment over to their house without my knowledge, and... Um, he thought it would be, I mean, this was my most valuable equipment, and he took it over to their house. I'm not sure why he did that. Well, did you ask him? I asked him, and he, um, he just kind of took liberties like that. That's why he's not in our life anymore. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's All right, but when you asked him, what did he say? He said, oh, I took it over to Chris and Nikki's house. In order to do what with it at Chris and Nikki's? In order to store it there. Okay, so, they so agreed apparently to store it. he had sought permission from Chris and Nikki to leave it at their house for storage. Is that what you were saying? That's correct. All right. And then what happens? I went to talk to them. When? After I found out. It's around November 2008. Okay. And then um, they agreed that it would be okay, a verbal agreement that it would be okay to keep it there. Okay. Tell me about what you two, did, what both sides discussed. It was kind of a... Um, it was a verbal agreement, but it was... No, I don't want any more conclusions. I want to know what you said and what they said. If you don't remember, okay. just give I, me the gist of it. I don't remember exactly, right, but right. it seemed to be okay to have it there. What did you guys discuss about when you'd take your stuff out of their storage? Where, where were you keeping this stuff? In my shop. What kind of shop? We have a shop. We have a house, and then there's a shop next to it. Okay. When you say shop, what do you mean? Like a work area a or a 20, place that, that customers visit? No, it's a 20 by 40 workshop where I do workshop. woodwork in and stuff like that. Okay. So um, so what, what's your plan about when you're getting your stuff out of there? It was kind of, it was kind of a loose verbal agreement. So A verbal agreement to what? That you'd leave your to, stuff there for free for how long? For until I can come and get it or until they could bring it to me. And when did you finally get around to coming and getting it? Well, I tried to get it, um, let's see, 2010. Then I had an altercation with Nikki, and it was right around then that I was ready to have it because I had moved a couple times and you know had a little baby on my own. And then um, I finally bought a house, and then I had a place for it. I called them. I called Chris right after um, we had our altercation, and I told him on the phone that I wanted to um, make a plan to get my belongings back. And... He said that they would. They were in Florida. When was that? What month and what year? That was July 2010. Okay. So what does Chris say to you? He said that he would be happy to do that. Um, they, were, they were really busy because they were in, on a trip in Florida. And when, when he got back from his trip, that he would help me take care of it. And then what happened? Then Nikki called right away from his phone. And she started yelling at me. Saying what? I can't remember. I hung up on her. It was it was okay. rude. Saying what? Actually, we weren't in Florida. We were in um, New Jersey, burying Christopher's grandmother. 
I'm sorry to hear that. So you called her back? I asked her not to call us back because we were in New Jersey burying his grandmother. Okay. What, what happened to break the friendship? She didn't come and get her stuff. No, nah, that's not really what happened to break the friendship. The friendship had a problem before that. I Actually, um, the two gentlemen had a problem. What was the problem the two gentlemen had? I, well, I didn't really have a problem what, uh, um, with, I don't know what you're getting at. <laughs> I had no clue. <laughs> okay, so somebody leaves their stuff behind and they won't get it. How long do you have to wait before you can 86 it? I say 30 days. Why do you say 30? 30 days is plenty of time for somebody to get this stuff out of your home. Okay, fair enough. Uh, what do you think? Month tops. Month tops. And then you can sell it if you want? Yeah. Make money off of it? Give it away. You have to give the, if you make money, do you have to give the money back to the person who owned it originally? That's dependable. What do you think? Uh, it depends on the situation. Does it really? Yeah. Does it really? <laughs> Whether you like them or not, is that what it depends on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Going inside the courtroom. They've just, uh, to make it say, her and Lisa have always had friction between them. Okay. I mean, um, it, her ex and I have been good friends since high school. Okay. So that's kind of how the relationship, her, uh, my wife, and Lisa have always just, there's been friction since Never day really one. jumped. Okay. All right. And then what happened? They never got the stuff out? Never got it out. How long I mean, did it stay in your in your shop? It was How much space physically did it take about up? About five by five. Five by five? Mm -hmm. All right. So what happened? Yeah, like I said, it got delivered 12-12-2008. And after no communication, I decided to donate it to the school district in June of 2011. June of 2011? Mm -hmm. But she's talking about trying to reach you in July of 2010. What did you do between July of 2010 and June and another year? Well, I had a lot of personal things going on. Oh, okay. and, All right, and I, but hold on. So then you left your stuff somewhere for three years. You say, I want to make arrangements to pick it up. And then you slack off for another year. And then they finally get rid of your stuff and you're suing them for $4,000? Well, actually, I tried to get it back July 10th, 2010. You're not trying very hard. When you tried July 10th, they didn't give it away until, let me see. Do you have like a donation yes, receipt for the school so yes, I can I verify do. when you got rid of it? Yes, I do. If they don't get rid of it until uh, uh, the summer pictures. of 2011, you had two and a half, three I years to get that stuff. Pictures. I mean, how long do you think you have free storage? Well, I did try to contact them that July 2010, and he said he would help me get my stuff back. So why didn't you go to his house and get the stuff? He said he would contact me when they got back from Florida. Why are you so helpless? I'm not helpless. Then why don't you go over there and get the stuff? Why did? Why is your answer, well, I never got my stuff because he never called me after that? Why is? Why don't you just go get your stuff? Well, I had a lot of personal things going on. And, and my child was in the hospital. Okay, and I understand that, and I'm sorry for that. But you understand how that doesn't change your obligations as a person, as a grown woman. It doesn't change your obligations. And I, that would be that would be an answer to why on Friday you couldn't do it. Like, well, that day an emergency arose. But in the span of three years. All right, folks, here's how it works. OK, the question becomes in this case. All right. Is not how they took care of the stuff, but what they ended up doing with the stuff. So what this is, is a concept in the law called abandonment. Does someone where you have stuff there stored for two and a half years and do not come pick it up, do they, are they the ones with the onus of calling you and getting you to get your stuff? Or are you the one with the, the burden of going over there and physically moving the stuff out of the storage room? You're the one with that burden, especially after a time frame like this. Now we're done. Okay. When you leave something there for two and a half years, and then you tell me, yeah, and I was, I said to them, I'm picking it up in the summer of 2010, but then he never called me, so I left it there another year. There are risks involved with the free storage you were taking advantage of. This is one of the risks, especially with people who apparently have a problem. This is amazing to me that you would let it go this long. But when you let it go this long, and you know it's over there, which you knew since, since 2008, uh, you know, and we know that now, that you know it's over there, you make zero effort to get it, you say, yes, let's get together, and then you still don't go over there and get your stuff. At some point, when is it your responsibility? I'll tell you when. If you're not going to take the responsibility, I'm going to give it to you right now. I did My verdict in this times. case is for the defendants. Plaintiff's out here after losing this case. Uh, step on in here. What, what's your reaction to this? I don't feel like I was able to 
get all my information out there. Well, what took three three years? I mean, they were storing your stuff. You got the benefit of the well, story. I did try a couple times. I did, wasn't able to really tell her, but I tried. All right. Any satisfaction, at least that the equipment's being used by students? No. People learning? No, I was going to actually teach in my community, okay. children in my community. All so. right. Okay, right, right that right. way. Okay, so step on out here. So you win your case. Come on in here. You satisfied now? Mm -hmm. Very much so. Think she tried to take advantage of you? Yes, I do. Anything else? No. Harvey? Okay, so if you leave valuable possessions with somebody when you take off or whatnot, you better nail down all of the terms in writing, especially the duration of the agreement. That will do it for this case. Litigants, for the next case on the way into the courtroom, right now.